motoring. What they said. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week we're at the Ritz-Carlton down in Orlando, Florida for the 8th Annual Festivals of Speed. This show has got everything. Classics, race, exotics. I think the only criteria is it has to be the best of the best. Dig it. Not bad. It's an extraterrestrial vehicle. Future classic. That's a crowd pleaser. Oh God, six levers. Oh geez. Joe, what an amazing <laughs> show, man. This is incredible. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks for coming out. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. This is what, the eighth year for, for the one here in Orlando? This is the eighth annual Ritz Carlton Orlando Festival of Speed. Well, you know, I, I don't even know how to describe this show. It's because <laughs> uh, it's it's really it's everything. It's a nice mix. It's a nice mix. Vintage <laughs> contemporary. We have air, we have a jet on the show field you do, full you of know, cars. Yeah. And how often does that happen? But but it really is. I mean, you got a lot of the you know late model exotics. Yes. But you got classics. You got vintage race. You got one offs. You got you know some customs and some. I mean, it's just amazing. It's a smorgasbord. We bring everybody together in yeah. a beautiful venue, and we just try to have fun. Well, yeah, and you're right. I mean, even the motorcycles are like all. Oh, Historically significant yes. and, you know, I mean, ultra rare. And you do not only the one here in Orlando, but there's other festivals of speed, right? Absolutely. We do Miami, the Epic Hotel, of yeah, course, yeah. Orlando here, Vinoy in St. Pete, yeah, and yeah. the Omni Plantation in Amelia Island. And, you know, and I've got to tell you the other thing is there's a lot of folks here today, too. But you draw a yes. lot of public, and everybody just seems to be really digging it. <laughs> yeah, well, you hit the nail on the head earlier. We got a great vibe here. Yeah, you yeah. know, I, I love and appreciate a lot of the major concours and events. We try to take beautiful machines, but we like to just kind of let our hair down, relax a little bit. The pressure's off here. Pressure right? is the off. The pressure is completely the off. The pressure is off. And everybody's friend. just, you know, they're just chilling and they're yeah. hanging out around some really nice cars. Enzo Ferrari. Do you know where the keys are for this sucker? I mean, I don't know. Well, the owner's sitting right over there, <laughs> and he did coincidentally win best of show with the 330 Ferrari. Let's go so. chat with him. What do you say? Let's, let's go find him. Come on, what do you say? Over there. <laughs> JP, you've got prime real estate here. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is like the centerpiece of the show. I would agree with that, yes. <laughs> what? A wild machine. Thank Rolls you. Rolls Royce, what? Uh, it's the product of, of several people's sick imagination. <laughs> the part of it, mine. And, you know, I respect that. I do. It's really a, a custom built car that was totally built around the engine, uh -huh. which is a Rolls Royce engine. It's, it's the uh, Meteor engine, which uh -huh. is the same family as a Merlin. They used them in Spitfire airplanes, right, exactly, they used them in exactly. tanks, and uh, it's a 650 horse. Rolls-Royce V12, ground pounding a Absolutely, and, and, and on, a, on a, a, a period Rolls chassis? It's actually, it's on a, on a Cadillac chassis, uh, but the, you know, the, everything is custom built, but uh -huh. it's all period, yes, uh -huh. 1928. What I wanted to create was a, a dual cowl, dual V windshield, crazy. Oh, so there's actually a steampunk looking machine. Oh yeah, there is, yeah. It, there's a cover over it now. This, you know, you could call a it a child seat, seat or, yeah. Wow. Actually, um, and you have Snoopy we got in our there. passenger here. <laughs> well, and, and the wood is, is this, is this mahogany or what is it? It's a Sapelli wood. It's the same wood that's done, uh, that what people use for the Riva speedboats. This, this thing didn't have doors either. So we built the doors and see how they open up. They kind of like go down. It's the opposite from a Gullwing Mercedes. It, it comes down. <laughs> Wow. And then all these gauges and everything. You see that, that voltmeter? That's yeah. from the 1800s. It's such a crowd pleaser, too. I mean, people are just all over this. Can, yeah. we, can we look at that? Uh, at the end? Yeah, oh, absolutely. That's Meteor, cool. I guess, right? Yeah. OK, here she comes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's a monster. 
<laughs> now, I, Rolls it Royce kind of redefines the, the muscle car <laughs> idea, doesn't it? This is serious muscle. <laughs> so <laughs> these were these were uh, used in the Spitfires and stuff, right? I mean, yeah, that's, well, it's you know they're a little bit different, but the the basics of of the machinery is. is they're fairly the same. What a yeah. monster. And they are, they're always mounted like this, too. Yes. Every time I see them, they're always at this angle. Is there a reason for that? Or is that just um, how, they, how it I has to fit? I don't know exactly, no. But you know what? In the, in the airplanes, they were actually upside down. Really, eh? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, I mean, this runs and... and, and it runs and drives. And um, the only thing is, uh, you know, you really... To make this <laughs> street legal, I'm, I, I would probably have to do something about is this. It, because is it the a flames little noisy? Shoot, it's, <laughs> the flames are going to shoot out this far. So my, my worry is this, if I drive this in my hometown, Fort Lauderdale, and I'm sitting at a traffic light, Woof, you and, said somebody and I got this fire. beautiful, <laughs> nice lady next to me and on a Vespa scooter, I might be shaving her legs uh, with this. Yeah, so what do you call this baby? We call it Thunderbolt. <laughs> you know what? The thunder is there and the bolts do come I out. I think I would too. JP, thanks so nice much. Nice meeting you, thank you. 1928 Rolls with the Rolls-Royce Meteor engine. Yes, sir. Wow. <laughs> Ron, this is a wild machine. This is this is a 67 Camaro. Correct. I mean, it started life as a 67 Camaro. It started out as a 67 for sure. Well, I saw it coming in and I was like, man, what is that? You know, and it's it's a 67, but it's like had an awful lot done to it. Oh yeah. I mean, like tip to tail. What what all have you done so here? The client that we built this for, he want he's got a lot of exotic cars. He wanted okay. a muscle car with an exotic car flavor. Uh -huh. We modernized the car, modernized the interior, uh, but kept the classic lines of the car. So you still see it, you know it's a Camaro. We've done a lot, I mean, I like what you've done up here. And there's a lot of different functionality here. We did LED style headlights. Yeah. To, but we kept the original flavor, the original 67 right, with the right. round lights. And then this carbon fiber, oh, it's an overlay, right? Right, this is real carbon fiber. It's overlaid over the original sheet metal. And then the interior, it looks modern day, but yeah. you've also, you made it fit a 67. Right, so what we did is we took Certain pieces of a 2013 interior, yeah. like the dash, and we started with some door panels in the center console. We chopped them and sectioned them and clay modeled them all to make it fit the proportions of a 67. Obviously, you look at a, a 60s car and a 2013, they're hugely different. different. Yeah, yeah. So we took all the proportions and, and shrank it down to make it fit this car body style. And I love the tail light treatment. It's crazy. We took the elements of both cars. We took a 67 with the gas door, and uh -huh. we did 69 tail lights, but we inverted them to give it a little bit different flavor. So Throws people off a little bit. It's not exactly uh, Camaro, but it, it's definitely a Camaro. But it, but it is Camaro. I mean, right. it's, it's you, you know you you changed it, but you didn't. So right. you said you put a pretty beefy engine in it. Let's go. Let's go look at that. Let's take a look at it. Now, that is clean. That is unbelievably clean. Where's the engine? It's in there. <laughs> I promise you. Really, all, really. all those horses are down there. Um, <laughs> you know, like when you look at Ferraris and, and, and Lamborghinis, they've all got their really dressed out, beautiful engine compartments. Right, right. We took an LS9 Corvette ZR1 engine. This one's tuned, we're, uh, we're running about 750 horsepower. Normally they've got the window on them on the Corvettes where you can see right. them. So we kind of did the same thing, made it the crown jewel, built the shroud around it. It's beautiful and you know, you've done the carbon overlays on the wheels, you've done, I mean, Emran, this is just a stunning piece of work. Thank you. We just debuted it at SEMA a few weeks ago and this is the second showing here at Festival of Speed. Big hit at SEMA? Oh, phenomenal. So, Emran, beautiful, car. 67 Camaro and then some. Yes, sir. Well, Mike, we're standing here in front of an absolutely beautiful 61 Imperial, which is part of a set of five a Imperials. Five. There's three of them here, but five of them, 57, 8, 9, 60, and, and 61, 61, all in a set. Yeah, the whole uh, Virgil Exner uh, years. The, the Exner collection, if Exner. you <laughs> There you go. And that's pretty amazing to begin with. But this one is the one that just knocks me out. I think the 61 is the most extreme of all of them, and this is just a beautiful specimen. It is. It's a very beautiful car. Well, it's, and this is also... I mean, it's an Imperial. So this is the era where this really wasn't a Chrysler. Correct. It's an Imperial. Correct. Just like the Continental for two years wasn't really a Lincoln. Exactly. It was a Continental. Exactly. So that's what these are. And I mean, what a car. It's massive. How long is it? It's got to be close it's, to 20 feet. It is. It's probably about 18 and a half feet. <laughs> it's and, a garage full. Yeah, it is, it is a garage full. And it has the uh, split bench interior with per perhaps the wildest dash and steering wheel ever made. Beautiful. It this is, is beautiful. I mean, they're, they're styling from the front of this car to the back. They really utilize a, a lot of different angles and mm -hmm. points on these cars. And of course, all the power options, you know, these cars were, came fully loaded. 
Uh, they were um, they were quite the car. Everything you could put on it was put on it. Was put on it. Well, this was the top tier. Yeah. Now this obviously has been completely restored. Correct. And and correctly. Yes. It appears. Very correct. But what an extreme fin. 61. Everybody else was starting to dial it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. But this may be the biggest fin they ever put on. Virgil was was finishing his run at, at uh, you know as a design with with quite the statement I feel in 61. <laughs> These taillights are obviously uh, really really unique to this car. And it's still got the. Uh, what I always refer to as the toilet seat lid. Yes, yes. <laughs> but the, the faux continental kit. So this could have had a number of engine options, the 61. What does this have? This is the 361. Let's go look at that, baby. Sure. There it is, Dennis. Very nice. Again, showroom perfect, but only a 361. This seems like a lot of car to haul around with that. It's a lot of torque, though. They produce <laughs> yeah, a lot of true. torque. That's true. And, and, and it would come in handy with this, baby. Yes, it would. So the radiator's clear back here. This is. I mean, you could put luggage up here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is amazing, but there's a lot of front on these cars. Yeah, there really is. And, and then it's, it's interesting to me just how, how the, the hood is cut out of the front. Because here's this massive front end. There's not a lot of... It's just, you know, it's hood here. Not a lot of cars in 61 had this. This is actually looks more like it should be a 70s car. Yeah, it, it does. I've died and gone to heaven. Thank you. Like, thank you. <laughs> Beautiful thank you, car. 61 Imperial. We appreciate you coming out. Well, Todd, festivals of speed here, and you got some vintage period speed here. 32 Ford, but I, it was the engine. I just love the setup. What's the deal, man? It's a flathead Edelbrock heads. It's got a McCulloch supercharger on it, which is extremely rare. I'll say. Yeah, and McCulloch had actually, which is the chainsaw guy, right, he, right. He, he had created this style and actually sold the patents to Paxton way back in the day. I knew there was a, a relationship of some sort between the two. I just wasn't sure what yes. it was. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, I mean, that's the supercharger. This neck, though, is, I mean, the setup is different than anything I've ever seen. Yes, this, uh, this intake manifold, as we're going to call it, uh, was to allow the dual 97s, the Strombergs, to drop below the hood. Because they could sit up here, right? Yes. But then she'd be... This is set up so that we can put a single uh, Stromberg here, or with the Elmquist, you could run a dual up here, but then, of course, we'd have to have cut the hood and... The hood's not on the car, but I have the hood and it sits and on beautifully and it's, it's all tucked away. But I just could not cover up this beautiful <laughs> motor. So the hood's, hood's in the attic. And yeah, screw, <laughs> screw the hood. <laughs> and then up here, that's not really an air cleaner. It's it's a flame arrester. Okay. But it's, you know, it's, it's an it. old school period correct, you know, along with the old beehive oil filter, you know. And well, in the rest of the car, I mean, she's an all metal car. And, yep. and it's, I mean, it's, it's, we're all about the engine, but it's a beautiful car and just real yeah. understated, real simple. Yes, I cruise this around quite a bit. That is a Thank you. bad old school machine there. I love it. Thanks, Todd. Good to meet you, Dennis. Well, David, this is a real treat. This is going to be a little bit of McLaren Can-Am chronology, right? Yes, sir. So we have here a 66? 66 M1B McLaren. Uh, originally raced in the US RRC series, which then turned into Can-Am in 66. Uh, it was campaigned by a privateer from New York. And and what powered this thing? Uh, Chevrolet, uh, small block, 350. And Can-Am was, I mean, it was such a wonderful series. It was sort of the last bastion of no holds barred, run almost anything racing, wasn't it? Absolutely. Any displacement, wheels, bodywork you wanted to run, I mean, they had low wings, high wings, you name it. They, just, they tried everything. Just run it. Was this a fiberglass car? Or it it this... was a tube frame uh -huh. with a fiberglass body. And, you know, really, I love, you know, the shifter right there. But just a few gauges, steering wheel, gas pedal. Bare minimum. Let, let's, go, let's go racing, right? Correct. So Always. this is 66. Correct. If, if we move up in time, now we've got this baby over here, which is a, what, a 68? This is a 68 M6B, which was the next evolution of the McLaren Can-Am car. This is a slightly bigger engine. This is a 383. Um, has the Hewland LG gearbox. Straight 383, plugging. so is it, a, is it a Chrysler engine or is it a... It's, it's just a... A stroked down. 350. Exactly. Okay, uh -huh. yep. Borden stroke 350. Yep. But, you know, cockpit-wise, still pretty similar. Very similar. A and again, uh, fiberglass body? Correct, but uh, aluminum monocoque chassis. Okay, so we're going to now step it up to the big brother of, of all of them. This baby is a 70... Seven, M8F. M8F, yep. powered by... Chevrolet Big Block. Oh boy. 454. So, and kicking, what kind of horsepower did these things make? From what I've heard, they were up 800, 900 horsepower. <laughs> and they weighed like? 
I think 1,600 pounds. Whew. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Yeah. I think top speeds were close to 200 miles an hour. Thunderously loud. Yeah. And your feet stick past the front wheels. Well, that makes you feel really yeah. good too, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, with yeah. fiberglass yeah. Yeah, around you. Can we fire it up? Absolutely. Let's, let's do it. Let's do that. I'd call that thunderously yeah. loud. Yeah. <laughs> let's hear it. Let's hear it for the <laughs> Oh man, the Festivals of Speed is a great show. A little bit of something for everybody. And you know the Ritz-Carlton in Orlando? Not a bad place for a car show. <laughs>